So we have uh, Prashad now. So I will, I will appreciate if you wake up for a moment, okay? <laughs> leave the phones, don't check Twitter. I mean, leave Twitter alone for a moment. <laughs> and just put some energy welcoming Prashad. Thank you, Prashad. Thanks a lot. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how I'm gonna, how I'm going to top that GIF, but I'm gonna try my best. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Prashant. I work as a front-end consultant for Frontman, you can check us out at frontman.nl. And today I'm here to share with you guys some of the new stuff about DevTools. I'm not gonna go into all the tiny little details about DevTools, but I'm gonna touch upon some of the most recent development on DevTools that I find really exciting and I can't wait to share with you guys. So let's just get started. I'm gonna start with this panel over here. We all know this thing, right? It's like a, one of the first things you see when you open up the DevTools. And I got the device mode turned on over here. Uh, I like to augment this panel just a little bit. So the first feature I'm gonna be talking about is gonna be more about aesthetic than about a useful developer feature, but I absolutely love it. And that is device frame. So you turn device frame on by finding this button over here on top, menu, show device frame. And then DevTools is gonna surround your application with this beautiful device artwork. Now the good thing is, uh, if you capture a screenshot, uh, you can do that by hitting Command Shift P. Command Shift P with the command menu is the way to go. It makes you super productive. You can do everything using just the keyboard. So I'm gonna do capture screenshot. And once that's done, the good thing is this device artwork is gonna go along with the screenshot. So you know, if you are sharing a bug or a feature that you built or showcasing your application in a presentation or something, this is really like, super useful, right? And it does just a little bit more than that. And that is, you can also visualize how your app behaves if the native keyboard was on. So you can do that by finding this little button up top, click on it, and then portrait keyboard. And Depth is gonna pop this virtual keyboard in so you can try it out how your application looks and behaves uh, when this keyboard is on. Uh, before I move on to other stuff, I got one more thing to show you here, just a little pro tip. Uh, nothing too fancy. So if you're working with a responsive mode, right, like you use this panel a lot to do this thing, but this thing is super sensitive uh, and it's hard to control. So if you want 650 pixel, you can get to 651, you can get to 649, but never to 650 because, yeah, it's super sensitive. Just a pro tip, just hit the shift button and the scrubbing of the resolution becomes a lot easier. It's just a small convenience tip. All right, moving on to network panel. I'm gonna show you guys this new feature which is called Network overwrite. Network overwrite basically allows you to overwrite your network resource with a file on your disk. And it's super useful while debugging stuff. Uh, by the way, it's on by default in Canary, but on stable channel, you have to find the experimental flag and turn it on. You can do that by finding the experiments tab right here. And uh, if it's not here, hit the shift six times to get into these extra options. This is like bleeding edge or bleeding edge stuff. And then you can find the option that I'm looking for, which is override request with workspace project, and you're all set. Uh, what does network override do? Consider a scenario. Uh, you're working, there's a production issue. I, as a developer, most likely know where the issue lies in the code, right? So I just wanna hack around in the production code. Uh, you know, just drop in some console logs, drop in some debugger statements, and maybe change the code a little bit instead of setting it up in my local setup and trying to replicate the issue there. That's what network overrides allows you to do. Up until now, you probably have to use a third-party software like Charles on Mac and Fiddler on Windows, I think, to be able to do these kind of things. Now it's baked in in DevTools. Let me show, how, show you how it works. Let's imagine that this app had an issue, right? And I know that the issue lies on app.js, so I just wanna fiddle around with it. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna first of all set up the overrides. I'm gonna do that by going to Sources folder, finding the Overrides tab, that's new. Select a folder where DevTools gonna put all your overridden files in. I got one right here. It's gonna ask for read and write access, allow that. And now I'll go back to network. This is the resource that I wanna overwrite. Right click on it, save for overwrites. Now DevTools is gonna serve this resource from your disk instead of network. So let's say like I know what the issue is, so I'm just gonna drop in some console logs uh, or change the code even, right? Just a bunch of trial and error runs until I find and fix the issue right there in production. Uh, just to show you guys that it works, I'm just gonna drop in a good old alert over here, reload the page, and it's there, right? So this production code works for you, empty cache and hard reload, still there, 
super awesome for debugging, so definitely check that out. Another stuff I got in network is, so you were on this panel over here, you can click on a resource, it's give you, it gives you detail, right? You can't do much with it. Uh, you can set breakpoints, you can change the code. Uh, to be able to do that, you have to right click on it and do open in sources panel. And then you're taken to the sources tab. You do a lot of context switch because you switch tabs a lot. If you're doing, for example, it's the same if you're on performance panel instead. Like you do a lot of context switching and that's not great for productivity. You could do a lot better. And Chrome DevTools gives us tool to do this a lot better now. And that's, that thing is called quick source. Uh, hit command shift B again to bring this thing up. And then I'm gonna type in quick source, show quick source. And then this panel comes in at the bottom over here. And if I repeat the same thing by going to network and then right click on it, open in sources panel, instead of, uh, okay, let's go to the quick source. You can also trigger it by going to the quick source down here and go to sources panel, network, right click, open in sources panel, and instead of opening it in the separate sources tab, it's gonna open it right down here. So you have this like one place to work with the entire thing, entire development workflow. So you don't have to do a lot of tab switches. It works the same from anywhere else in DevTools. So that's uh, quick source. Talking about sources, I'm gonna show you guys one new stuff on sources panel, and that is called workspace. Workspace is a way with which you can use DevTools as your entire uh, IDE, basically. Your full development workflow exists in DevTools. Let me show you how it works. So let's imagine you got a project. Uh, maybe you use Vue CLI for that. Uh, you start, you create a project using Vue CLI, you end up with something like this, right? Uh, you go to the editor of your choice, and then you edit something, you go back to the browser, back to the editor, back to the browser, so there's a lot of context switching again because you're doing a lot of application switching, right? And Workspaces tries to make this a bit better. Let me show you how it works. I got the source panel right here. I'm just gonna drag this source panel into the sources panel in the DevTools. Permission again. And now using the source map information, DevTools is gonna automatically map your compiled source code to actual view files, to actual source files. So I'm just gonna go to app view over here. Let's change some stuff, like make it 100 pixel. And then drop in some background colors. Let's make sure my server is running. Okay, I think my server is not running right now. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to skip this for now because uh, I may run out of time. But the, basically the thing is like you can work with your app.view files, the source files, and things will just auto work because the transpilation is happening in the background and it will live update here. And uh, it's not 100% there because you know we are missing syntax highlighting and stuff like that. But you can do a lot more already on, sor on the sources panel. In DevTools, you can do like fuzzy finding your search, uh, fuzzy finding your files. You can add new files right here, edit, uh, rename, all this stuff. But you can also do things like multi-cursor stuff, right? Like you, you can have this kind of stuff. So DevTools is advancing itself as editor. If we start using it like one, we can issue feature requests or issue bug reports and make it even more advanced. So I would suggest you to definitely check this out for your next project. Uh, besides that, the next thing, I wanna talk a little bit about performance. DevTools got this amazing tools that helps you out with performance related stuff that tells you about the guts of the browser when things are happening in the browser, right? But I wanna show you this new fancy thing. It's called uh, Performance Monitor. And I'm gonna hit Command Shift P again for that. Show Performance Monitor. And it basically this tool gives you real time health information of your application. So here you see this bunch of graphs coming up. There is a ton of metrics here. Things like how many nodes are there, how many JS event listeners are there, uh, how many layouts are happening per second, style recalculations. Basically, you run time health of your application, real time, as you work with your application. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click around here. As you can see, the DOM nodes go up, JS event listeners go up. It seems about right, right? Now what I'm gonna do, what I like to do is I go to performance panel, and there's this button over here called collect garbage to force the garbage collection. I'm gonna drop that, I'm gonna click on it, and things should go back to normal, or it should go back to the way it was when we started this whole thing. Uh, so with this tool, you can keep track of 
the health of your application, the runtime health of your application as you develop your application, as you play around with it. And it looks immensely uh, useful, but it also looks really, really beautiful. I mean, it makes me feel like I'm working for, I don't know, NASA or something. It looks even better in dark mode. Um, so performance monitor, all right, one last thing before I leave you guys here today is no JS debugging. So even if you're like a fully front-end developer spending 100% of your time on the front-end, you're still dealing with Node.js, right? Because all our build tools are built on Node.js, like Vue CLI, uh, Webpack, Dalt Grunt, whatnot. They're all uh, Node.js, so you have to deal with Node.js. Or maybe you're working with Node.js. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could use just the sources panel, the regular stuff, the dev tools, to actually debug Node.js as well? And nowadays, with Node 6 and up, and the latest dev tools, that's totally possible. And I'm going to show you how. I got this script over here. I probably have to make it a bit longer, script.js. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in node dash dash inspect dash break. It can also take the option inspect. I'm going to type in inspect break. I'll show you why. And then script.js. I'm going to go back to DevTools. See this little node icon over here? So I'm going to click on that one. And it's going to automatically stop on the first line of my node code. If I had typed in inspect, it wouldn't happen. Inspect break automatically stops it on the first line. Now I can go ahead and try out, uh, like debug my Node application, just like I would on the front end, right? The way I use it is like, uh, I like to look under the hood of the things that I'm working with. So let's say I'm working with Vue CLI. I want to know how Vue CLI is doing things. I want to know what Webpack is all about under the hood, right? And this still helps me a lot, because what I usually do then is like Vue CLI, um, just basically the same stuff. First of all, I need to find w uh, where the binary of Vue CLI exists. I'm just going to do view, which view. OK, it's in user local bin view. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Node dash dash inspect break slash user local bin view. And the exact same thing. It's going to automatically attach the node session to the dev tools. And now I can just inspect the entire flow of Vue CLI uh, or Webpack or what have you and just learn the internals of these things and not just be you know, relying on the documentation. The sources is the ultimate truth. The source code is the ultimate truth, right? So that's the way I use it to actually learn stuff. And I think it's immensely useful uh, for everybody else as well. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I hope you guys found a thing or two that you pick up today and you can immediately start using at work tomorrow. Um, I have the, all the things that I talked about I have on my slide as a list so that you guys can have a reference later, the things that I ran through. Um, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. It has been an immense pleasure. Thanks a lot.